Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Lock in Your Success Trade and Market Update for November 17th, 2014. Before we get going, we would like to remind you that this presentation is for educational purposes only. We're not broker dealers or financial advisors, and we're not making any specific trade recommendations. Also, the risk of loss in trading options can be substantial, so please be aware of all your risks prior to placing any trades. Also, please note that we do use uh, hypothetical computer simulated trades and results in the presentation that are believed to be as accurately represented as possible. However, uh, live results may vary. Before we get um, going, if you're watching this on YouTube or some other venue, come on over our, our website at LockingYourSuccess.com. Check out the M3, the Bearish Butterfly Rock, M21 Group Coaching and Trading Triangle programs. And join our mailing list, get your free reports, seven secrets to become a successful trader, and sign up for this weekly webinar. Uh, and all of course, uh, stay tuned for our programs that are under development. Okay, let's take a look at what's going on in the markets. Not a whole lot has really changed. We have the Russell that uh, kind of took off early in the week last week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We had a decent climb, and we we uh, sold right back off again, closed neutral for the week. So um, if you're close to expiration, that move probably caused you to force up, uh, force you to adjust up a little bit. But uh, the pullback wasn't very severe, so that shouldn't have been too big of a deal. If we look at the other indices right now, uh, particularly the Dow, uh, had a, a, a bit of an up week, so it continues to uh, just climb that worrisome, worrisome wall, the wall of worry, as they say. And we're just kind of waiting to see where this is going to top out, and we're probably going to get some sort of retracement back here to around uh, at least a couple hundred points, maybe uh, 250, 300 points, depending on how high it goes before it actually retraces. But it wouldn't be uh, too much of a, of a uh, surprise to see this back around 17.4 or so at some point in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, if you look at the, um, the NDX, again, we had a, a fairly decent up move. It kind of broke out past its previous highs, continues to climb. This is way, way overextended for, uh, for, from a point value point from any time in history. From a percentage point, it's not terribly bad, but it is uh, still uh, much more than usual. So again, we'd be expecting this to come back down, retest uh, the 4100 area uh, at some point before it goes too much higher. SPX, again, is at its, pretty much its maximum limits. It usually goes. We're at a resistance level. We'll have to see if it can push higher or not, but either way, you know, I'd expect this to be down uh, in 2010, 2010, 2000 level as well. In other words, start backing off at some point and probably cycle. This looks very similar, if you look at it, very similar to this pattern here, where we had a fairly aggressive sell-off. We had the market come back to neutral, which we, when I say come back to neutral, I mean come back to the old tops, which is uh, 1850, ground up for a period of time, uh, had a, a blow-off day, ran sideways a few days, and then came back down to this uh, area at... Um, uh, near neutral again. So likely that's going to happen here. We're going to have here, we might have one blow-off day over our um, uh, our resistance uh, trend line here, and then uh, probably pull back down into this 2000 area, and that will bring the Russell probably down approximately 30 to 40 points. So uh, you might be looking at 1140 to 1130 in the Russell if that actually happens, and the Russell goes along with it. So those are, are my thoughts on the market. So I'm kind of, I think we, I, I kind of outlined this a little bit last week, um, that we were, uh, you know, climbing the tops here, and we're due for the market to reset. And when it does, the Russell's probably going to come down fairly aggressively and fast. So that being the case, since I was in uh, a trade or uh, several trades in November expiration that are going to be kind of, they're going to be fairly sensitive to price movement, I was just looking at those trades saying, you know what, um, I'm going to try and get as close to I can, as I can with to my profit targets. I just want to get out of the trades. And that's pretty much what happened with the trades um, last week, as you'll see going forward. Yeah, so I just have a comment. You notice that the SPX and NDX are advancing on low uh, AD ratio, um, advanced decline ratio, 
indicating only a few stocks are participating in the in the uh, in the drive up, which is uh, I would agree with that. Uh, people continue to buy, and it seems to be, and it, it doesn't seem to be terribly market wide. It's just uh, just kind of grinding up here. I think a lot of directional traders are nervous. If you get a um, some sort of a uh, support break, sometimes that can be fairly fairly aggressive, although short term. Now that said, I don't think the markets are going to stay down. I think that um, you know we're going to get that retracement, and then the uh, the SPX, the Nasdaq, the Dow will start to continue higher, and it'll probably drive the the um, the Russell to you know the, these highs, twelve ten, twelve fifteen, possibly even a breakout by the end of the year. Uh, as December is usually a fairly bullish year, and everybody tries to push things up in December. So uh, that being the case, you would think a pullback late November, or maybe early December, and then a, a another grind up into this 12-10 area, which would actually be a, a fairly decent trading environment as long as we're out of the November positions prior to that happening. So those are my thoughts on the market, and let's just kind of switch over to the trades. So I will start with uh, with the no November M3, and again, you know, keep this in the context that we was. <laughs> I just want to be out of this trade at this point. We are fairly close to expiration, and I am. The market's been topped up and running sideways for a while, so I am uh, looking to get out as soon as possible. So here, like I said, we took off to the upside uh, early in the week. So on Monday, what I did is we see our delta level here. If we, well, let's look at the position. We're actually outside the tent, and people ask me, how long can I stay outside the tent? Well, you can pretty much stay outside the tent, uh, usually till like three days to expiration, sometimes even closer to that. But um, So I'm not concerned about that, but I am concerned that our delta is a little high outside the tent. We want it around minus 50, so come in here and do, uh, we always roll these two 1150 puts up to here. Roll these two up to here, right? Bring us down to closer to minus 50, right? I'm still minus 64, but um, um, at, at least reasonable at this point. So we just kind of flatten this T plus zero line out, make the line a little bit more stable. Still have a decent uh, downside move uh, risk. But let me clear these trades. Uh, pushed into Tuesday, right? And you can see that move from yesterday. Um, delta is remains high, so we just did another three of these here. Uh, let me see what time that was. Here's a T log. Did another another three eleven sixty eleven seventies. Three minus three, like uh, like so. All right, so just gradually <coughs> taking off, um, rising up my expiration line taking off risk up here as we uh, as we can, you know, as the market allows us to do so. Again, still good for a 20, 30 point down move. So a uh, nice safe position here close to expiration. All right, so there we are. And uh, we did that move and that brought the those three up to here. And then on Wednesday, let's see, do we have something going on on Wednesday? Nothing happened on Wednesday. Just kind of let this thing blow off. It did not uh, did not have any uh, adjustment needs at that point. So our delta was okay. We're still, uh, theta was okay. Vega is still negative. Put us in a position that looks like this. Just kind of let that sit. And then Thursday, the market backed down, ran into a delta issue again. And um, ended up doing another, just one of these 1160, 1170s. This is already shown, but there were seven and three, now there's eight and two. Brought us to uh, minus 64 delta. I think the pullback actually put us inside the tent. So this was looking fine here. And then on Friday, and then on Friday, uh, we ended up just pulling the trade off. So if we go to Friday at, uh, let's see, I'm going to show 1230. And it looked something like this. Actually, the the, um, the market had pulled back between <coughs> by by one o'clock. I had exited, but it pulled back, and the value would come up prior to um, prior to exiting. And we ended up exiting this at. Let me show the full T log ever request for that too. So here, 
is a full T-log. We had a lot of movements this month because the, the market was kind of all over the place. But um, let's kind of scan this down a little bit. You guys can pause the video and just kind of look at this. We'll go down to here. So a lot of moving around this month. And that is the full T-log for that. And then uh, we started the we exited this, and let's just see what um, what that came out to. <clears throat> it was it was fairly close to profit target numbers, I believe, but that was close enough for me. Um, I wanted to get out on Friday, so let's see here on the reports. Yeah, so forty four fifty five is uh, was the final number for um, uh, for the M three. For November, so that ended up being a fairly a fairly good trade. Uh, all right, so let's go to the November rock trade. Now, this is a, a just a, a perfect textbook month for the rock trade. We had a um, an entry test when we came in, 30 days to expiration, told us to put us into an M3. We then um, had to do a couple of roll ups, and then the market continued to grind up, and that's exactly what this trade is basically designed for. So let me get back over, let me get the actual trade over here. But that's what this trade is designed to do. It's designed to um, have a nice flat T plus zero line when the market is volatile and moving around, and then when it reaches the top and settles sideways, <coughs> excuse me, we pull into this um, high gamma, high theta trade that brings the money back into the trade. So let's take a look at this as of Monday. Um, let me make this smaller so I can see it. So as of on Monday, what do we have to do here? We had to uh, buy let's look, let, me, let me just look at in my um, so as of Monday, if you, if you remember last Monday, we had actually been in um, we had actually gone from the butterfly, converted into a rock position already. And this is what the position looked like on Monday before we made any adjustments. Uh, that might not be right. Let me look at the timing on Monday when the adjustments were made. Actually, they were done at a little bit early. So we started this out. Remember, the rock trade is a high gamma trade. We usually, in with close to expiration, we us do usually tend to look at this a little bit intraday. So 2 o'clock, we bought three. 1190 butterflies on Monday. And then we did two more here at a little little bit later. 1190 butterflies, and these are broken wing butterflies. No, these are just these are full butterflies. And then uh, at the end of the day, we bought another one. So we bought a total of it looks like three, five, looks like a total of five. Butterflies up here at uh, 11.90, and we also added we also added one up here. So if we look at our position, we added the butterflies, regular butterflies in here at 11.90, and then I added one of a uh, of the 12.10. So a normal rock trade, we scale into 11.90, we start scaling into the 12.10s. The 1210 butterflies are broken wing butterflies, and the reason is, is there's no reason to go forward and make these wider and take on more risk. So I came in and did the 1210 butterflies, and we did them broken wing because there's no point in taking on additional upside risk uh, in, 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 the, um, in the trade. So we're sitting here of about $6,000, a little over 10%, a little over 10 about maybe 12 or so, uh, looking for 20 to get out of this. If we move to Tuesday, we're going to buy, was there anything on Tuesday? Let me take a look. Yeah, it looks like we bought another one of these, 1160, uh, 1210, 1240 broken wing butterflies. We're just keeping our delta bet uh, between minus 186 and minus 250. Um, actually, minus 180 and minus 250. So we're gradually starting to pop the tent out here as the market goes up. Of course, we did. A, um, of course, we on Wednesday 
I had another up move. So let's come in here and run another up move. And we added more of these, two more of these, 1160, 1210, 1240 broken wing butterflies. Here we are actually pushing over our maximum negative delta. So why did I allow that to happen? Let me see. There may have been something done later in the day. 1412. Looks like 1530 was the last um, was the last hurrah there. So I am I am actually slightly over negative here. I should have had a couple of more of these in here. So let me. Um, You know what I did? I, I actually I'm looking at my notes. I held this overnight at this position. Um, minus two fifties is technically the um, is technically the number. I believe that um, I believe that yeah. It, it, that at the time I looked at the number, I wasn't actually over that. So I'm minus one fifty three here here. I happened to hit the twelve. Um, 330 number was slightly over. Actually, this is another thing that you guys have to get used to with Option View, and they recalculate. And, and I do get a lot of questions on this, so it's a good time to bring it up. They actually recalculate these Greek numbers every time you hit the time frame, so you will sometimes get slightly different Greek numbers. Um, you'll get a certain Greek number when you're actually trading. You'll get uh, sometimes a slightly different number when you go back and back trade it and even when you back trade it and switch back and forth as evidence here we're minus 222 delta so the number I'm looking at this is about this is close to an adjustment point I, and I did make some adjustments but I didn't bring it down quite that far um, but this is this is pretty much where we should be so I'm sure I was looking at a number of in the low 200s when I went overnight uh, so, so anyway, this is the way that the trade looked. If we came back and it was clearly over, I'd actually come in here and trade this because I want it to go by the by guidelines. But as of this point, we are within guidelines. So that is good. We want to stay there. Wednesday, um, so this is Wednesday, and really no other adjustments here. So I believe Wednesday was the last, the 12th was the last adjustment before uh, Friday. And Friday, we just closed it. So if I show this at... Um, 14.30 on Friday. Obviously, the market came down, and um, we ended up being uh, 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 closer to our profit target here. If we go to 1,400, anyway, this came out, this ended up coming out close to, uh, this ended up coming out at our 20% profit number. And I don't know why it's not um, not there now. Let me look here. Monday rock. Uh, it's around eight thousand here. I may have made a mistake or changed the T log. This ended up putting in about uh, about a tenth. Oh, I'm Thursday. That's why. <laughs> Let's go to Friday. That would help. I was wondering why that was low. All right. Okay. So here we are, Friday. Right. Eleven thirty. We up, uh, we are up at our profit target because the market sat down, and we do gain uh, value pretty quickly. So my mistake, uh, if I'm on the right day, I have the right profit and loss, which is kind of uh, kind of interesting. So anyway, we came in here, shut this down Friday, ended up closing this out. Uh, I think I started started the exit around noontime. Um, ended up closing this out at just over a 20% number. So if we Go to the end of the day. Take a look at our uh, reports here. We closed out the month for ten thousand twenty-eight dollars, which is a twenty percent profit target. Which is actually, I think, one of the first. We'll look at the results. It's one of the might have been the first actual profit target month uh, on this trade for the year. The trade's been a good year, good good trade all year. It's just that it's been an N three configuration most of the year. So uh, we ended up. Um, taking lower than normal numbers earlier in the year. That's that trade, and of course the V condor. I can show you what that what that looks like, but uh, no no adjustments here. We're just waiting for this to expire. This is essentially what we look like here. We're going to take a minus 290 loss unless something really weird happens in the market. So 
that being the case, where I know where I'm going to end up with my V quanta for November, then I can come in here and I can take a look at the results for the year so far because November essentially is uh, pretty much determined. So, oh no, I didn't look at the bearish butterfly. Let's take a look at the bearish butterfly. Go back to Monday. I didn't even write down what I did on the bearish butterfly, so you'll have to uh, excuse me here. Unless I closed that last week. Let me see. No, nope, that's here. All right. So bearish butterfly expiration guidelines. We are in, let's just go to the beginning of the day real quick, and we'll, we'll kind of move forward because i got a lot of, well, actually, just December is really easy to go through, but I have some questions. So, so early in the day here. Bearish butterfly sitting here in 10, 1150 butterflies, 10, 1170 butterflies, 4, uh, 1190s. Looking for maximum delta of minus 500 intraday. Going to be scaling into the 1190s, scaling out of the 1160s. This is essentially the movements we're going to be making. And what we did here is if I come to the end of the day, we'll see what position we were actually in. I know I sold off, uh, I bought these, uh, bought uh, the rest of the 1190s to get fully scaled in the 1190s, sold off four of the 1150s to bring our delta down to a minus 250 towards the end of the day, and the position looks like this here. And now, of course, remember last week we were down, I think, almost $10,000, I think, last Monday, or it might have been two weeks ago. But uh, it's come back pretty well. We're looking for 10% profit and a quick little exit here. If we move to um, uh, let's see, T log. Looks like we had some adjustments on on uh, Tuesday, so we'll just go to the end of the day. I believe I rolled to twelve ten, so I pulled off. Oh no, I exited. The, we exited Tuesday, so we we're able to exit the position on Tuesday. Um, at, uh, I believe, about a 10% profit. So let's just look at the, I'll show you the T-log in a minute, but we'll look at the reports, right? Ended up being a, a, low, a lowered profit target month on Tuesday. They gave us our money, and we exited out of the position here. So that happened about, what, 2.30 in the afternoon. We pulled off the upper butterflies, just kind of worked our way out of the position here and ended up uh, with $5,000 profit. So nice nice uh, trade for that. So this came out as a 10% win for uh, November, which was a trade that was in question for a little while, but uh, turned out okay following just following the guidelines. We have the following is going to be an M3 trade. Okay, so uh, it's going to be an M3. We're up 8.9% for the M3 trade, so not quite a full profit target, as is normal. Usually you don't get the profit target out of the M3. We have our rock trade, which actually pulled a full 20% this month, which was the first time for the year. We have a, um, a V Condor, which is going to be down more than likely about half a percent, so a minor loss in the V Condor. So for the year, we are looking for... Um, we're at 133% for the bearish butterfly, which is very good. It's, um, it's running about average, but, I, but one of the things I realized is I made a mistake in here. Um, I always figure these nine wins, three losses. Uh, so that being the case, our expected return on this would have been 90% uh, for the year or 45,000, so we are actually above that number. If I run... Um, if I don't do the reduced profit target rules, I try to get 140% out of the year. In other words, I'm going to be pushing the trade into expiration more to get more money out of the trade. We're doing a more conservative adjust, um, adjustment strategy here where we're within the program where we're actually pulling the trade off at lowered profit targets. So that being the case, we have to expect lower profits. Um, M3 was supposed to be about a 60% return for the year. Again, that's uh, doing very well. Rock trade about uh, 120% for the year, which is uh, pretty much normal for that, and that is, um, is pretty much on target. 
and the V-Trade is just underperforming this year because the market's too choppy for a V-Trade type, v type of a trade. So uh, our results for the year so far is 133.1 in the bearish butterfly, 87.6 on the uh, M3 trade, about 115.4 on the rock trade, and uh, about 20.2 on the V-Trade. So it should be, should be a good year for the year. We're actually over what we... Uh, what we're kind of expecting for the year. You know, even if we have a loss in December, it's going to be a pretty nice year here uh, in all our trades. So it looks like a, a good 2012, uh, 2014 year, unless we are completely irresponsible with stuff, which we're, we're not going to be. So that's, uh, so that's good. All right, so just a couple questions here. Do I uh, personally live trade a rock trade for November? Yes, I did. Um, I, I personally traded the rock trade for November. I started out as an M3 and pretty much almost followed the guidelines here. Um, it wasn't the size necessarily that I normally trade because I don't like the market conditions right now. I don't um, go oversized in market conditions, but I did put part of my position into uh, follow this rock plan pretty much exactly in uh, live positioning. So we did do some of that. And... Uh, will I be doing any sort of in-depth year-end performance review? Um, I, I don't know. Um, if you have an idea of what you expect for an in-depth year-end performance review, then we can do that. Uh, I'm perfectly willing to do that, although you know, if we just kind of go over results, uh, I'm not sure what kind of detail you want in an in-depth performance review. Um, all right, so that's all the questions we have for now. Let's quickly run through December. And we will end it there. So for December, we currently have three trades on. We have our December V Condor, which had a minor adjustment. So let's take a look at that. December V Condor. So here we are uh, as of, let's just go to Friday. This was just a, a minor adjustment. I think it was on Tuesday or Wednesday. And all I did is I bought back uh, one of these uh, uh, 1220 calls, and that was happened to be on the 11th, which would have been Tuesday. We had a, a maximum delta problem, so I bought back one of those calls. Position looks like this here. So it looks okay. Uh, not the best. Um, I mean, the, the up move kind of took its toll on this. So if the market continues to be flat, doesn't go up too fast, or grinds up, then this could be okay. If it comes down to here, we'll pull the V, probably make a small profit for the month, and move on. But, um, you know, the trade's not in trouble. It's just not going to be a great performer again this month. Again, condors in general are not terribly good in really large back-and-forth movements, um, unless, of course, you're completely irresponsible with the strategy and risk-taking huge, huge losses, which uh, I would not recommend. Uh, and you happen to get lucky, and the market does reverse, then you can do very well with condors if you're a, if you're one of those uh, risky traders. But you can also get nailed pretty hard if it goes against you. So, you know, doing a safer condor strategies are kind of tough in this environment. Uh, all right, so December bearish butterfly, we did do a roll here. So let me take a look. Our Friday position on the bearish butterfly. Well, let's look at our earlier in the. Uh, weak position here. And let me look at the day I actually did the roll. So it was on Wednesday. So on Wednesday we rolled our 1130s up to 1190 because we actually we hit a, we hit a roll point trigger. And we went from this position here uh, up to let's just go to Friday. this position here. So we're now, we are now sitting in the 1150, 1170, 1190. Bearish butterfly fully entered. The market behaves. This could work out fairly well. The market doesn't behave. It's going to be kind of hard. We rolled up. If we get that large rollback or that large pullback that we're kind of expecting, this is... Um, now, this is when the aggressive trigger point rules and delta theta rules and stuff kind of take their effect to the, uh, 
to the detriment of the trade is you, know, you get these grinding up moves and then you get a harsh pullback. It gets a little bit risky. This way you can alter the rules if you wanted to. You know, certainly, normally, we're not going to touch this thing until we get back into here somewhere, which is kind of likely to happen. You can do things such as pull off your upper butterflies and we get neutral delta, and uh, that's going to give you a lot more downside room. And you can actually switch this into like a more of a rock trade type of a thing. You can also pull your center butterfly, go into a rock trade, uh, two-thirds entered, and then, so in other words, we had this climb, um, we drew down, the market went neutral. As long as the market behaves, very, very good trade. We could, we could hit our profit target actually very, very quickly here if you wanted to be an aggressive trader. If you wanted to, if you have the Rock program and the M3 program and you want to be more conservative, this thing pulls back into the 1160, it's probably going to be positive. You pull out the center butterfly, you treat it as a Rock trade, it continues to the downside, you go into a cap position and trade it out which would probably actually be a decent trade for the, the month if it does what I think it's going to do. Um, so anyway, that's just, that's just kind of cool, uh, a way you can convert it back. And then, of course, if it continues back, you can run back into the M3 position and convert it back, which is uh, how, how the systems work together. It's kind of cool. But anyway, this is the position we're sitting in now. We're only down $1,000. Everything looks perfectly fine here. If we go to... Uh, December M3 trade, minor adjustment there, right? That's the last one. So here's our December M3. We went from on Monday, let's see, we had an adjustment here of, oh, sorry, I don't understand this one. I look at the T log, so I get a look at my notes. Uh, oh, yeah, so essentially, let me show you the position we were in. It's going to be easier. We were in this position starting off, so we are heavy on the butterflies because we entered in higher volatility. We have four extra butterflies on. We have some verticals in here. We are uh, we did trigger a roll-up point being more than 10 points over the long strike for a certain period of time. So on Tuesday, we went ahead and rolled this up, and I just rolled it to, uh, I rolled it up 20 points to 1130, and uh, brought the butterfly size down to 10 butterflies. So if we come to Tuesday, at the end of the day here, you'll see we go from the 11.10 to the 11.30 with just 10 straight butterflies. Our Greeks are good. We are, um, actually it's a, the Greeks are slightly over, uh, a little bit too ne negative delta, but we fixed that the following day. Uh, this is the position here we were in. If we go to Wednesday, I added five, I believe, 11.30, 11.40 verticals just to get our delta down. So we started to put the verticals in here and to fix the T plus zero line a little bit. And then that was, I believe, it. Yep, that's it till Friday. And I believe we are close to break even on this thing. So yeah, we're well, down still down about a thousand dollars. So this is what the position looks like here on the December M3. So nice looking M3 trade, and uh, no no worries here at all. And that's all the positions. I uh, like I said, we're going to be just expire that B condor in November. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm out of all the November positions. Uh, we are going to be. 65 days to expiration. Uh, we're, I mean, sorry, we're going to start the V condor this week. Uh, when the uh, the other one expires, and we are going to get 56 days expiration on Friday, so we're going to be entering some actual January trades of 2015. So it should be exciting, and that's coming up. All right. So as far as questions, I don't have any other questions except what are the delta guidelines for the M3. Um, it depends on where the position is, so it's not clear-cut delta lines guidelines, but essentially on a $50,000 position, positive 50 to the downside, uh, minus 100 to the upside if you're in the tent, minus 50 to the upside if you're outside the tent is um, is what we're running for, for delta guidelines on a position that size. So if you're doing a, uh, a $5,000 position, you just do the math and cut it down. Or if you're doing a bigger position, you do the math and, and bring it up. 
So that, um, that's all we have. Yeah, so thanks for joining me today, everybody. And uh, see you guys, maybe some of you, on the Options Drive uh, live trade update in about half an hour. So talk to you soon. Bye.